Let's talk about an aspect of color management and print color matching that is often left out of conversation. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Color management. When everything works, it can be a thrilling experience. When it doesn't, it's like going down a never-ending rabbit hole. So let's try to pull some of you out from that rabbit hole a little bit. I'm going to talk about display to print color matching and some of the reasons why we want to do it. One of them would be to just save costs. If you can see exactly what you're seeing on your display reflected in your print, that's going to eliminate a lot of printing, adjusting, reprinting again, because as we're finding out, if you have an inkjet printer, the cost of ink, well, it can skyrocket really quickly and papers, they're not that cheap. So it's always a really great idea to control the whole process. And the other thing too, the reason why I want to do this is so that what we're seeing on the screen just matches with our print so that we know this is our creation. This is how we want it to look. Now, the one thing I want to really get out from the very beginning is that the reason why we do these color matching process is an instant in time, meaning that we're matching the print to display at the instant that we're printing out at the instant that we're comparing it to the display. Beyond that, once you hand the print to your client, you put it in a gallery, it's really difficult to control the lighting scenario that these prints are going to go in and you can't be certain what type of light condition your print is going to be put in. So you can't worry about that anymore. It's very similar to doing all the color adjustment in your display, uploading your print to the web and having your client pull up on a variety of different devices from new laptops, old laptops, from iPhone, some of them have true tone turned on, some of them have brightness turned up, some of them have night mode on. You start to see that it can go in a variety of ways. And in my other video, I mentioned that you should never try to match what you're doing here to a specific portable device, such as an iPhone or a Samsung phone, whatever that may be, because what looks great on one person's phone is going to look terrible on another person's phone because it is a highly customizable device. Not only that, those devices, the screen, even if you get five of the same model, they're going to look slightly different on every single one of them, as great as their calibrations are. It's the same thing in print, that we only do this for this incident time that we're trying to review the print and get the colors to match. It doesn't guarantee that it's going to look exactly the same in every single lighting situation, and you're gonna see why in a moment. So now let's talk about color matching your print to your display. For instance, some of you have already gone out and invested in a really great display, such as the BenQ SW Hardware Calibrate Display. This is the SW271C, a 27-inch 4K hardware calibrate display, and you're also going to need a color calibration device. You may be looking at a colorimeter, or you may already have one of these. This is the Calibrite Color Checker Display Plus, but you can always use the Color Checker Display Pro to run the display calibration. And because this is a colorimeter, it will only calibrate your display and the projector. It won't do any print paper profiling. Can this device be good if you own an inkjet printer in studio? Yeah, absolutely. You can always download the ICC profile from the paper manufacturer website or from the printer manufacturer website if you're using OEM paper. So that's always a way out. But you may still find out that, well, I tried to this solution and the colors are still not matching. By the way, one more thing I wanted to mention is that there has been a transition between X-Rite to Calibrite and the product portfolio transition. I'll put a link to that video up here and in the description below. You should check that out. So I'm referring to these Calibrite devices. There is an X-Rite device equivalent to them, so you can find that out in those videos. All right, back to the point I'm making. So if you try this solution, the color doesn't match properly, especially if you have an inkjet printer in studio. So you've gone out and purchased a color spectral photometer. This is the Calibrite Color Checker Studio. This one would do display projectors and it will also profile your inkjet printer. You take this through the whole solution and you're still finding out that the colors doesn't match perfectly. What's really going on here? Well, one of the things that we don't really talk about that much in this whole color management solution because the display is an investment, these color calibration device are in a big investment in itself, but is these cheap equipment that you have in the end here that you use to view your print that is not calibrated? And that is just one of the biggest irony that we have in color management. And again, not a lot of people talk about this. So I'm going to give you a few solutions 
for you to use to find a light source that will be good to view your print. But the key thing and the key takeaway from this whole thing is for you to find a light source that has a matching color temperature to the white point that you calibrate your display. If you can do that, regardless of if you use D65, D55, D50, it doesn't really matter. It's going to bring those two things, your print and your display, much closer together, and that is the key. So a lot of what I'm going to be referencing right now is going to be around D65. If you're starting out in printing, just start out with D65. I know some of you are gasping for air right now. If you do high-end printing, if you're familiar with D50, D55, if you use those before, that's perfectly fine. We're going to do another video to address that. But for now, if you're just starting out, just stick with D65 and try to match everything. And you're going to find that the prints are going to match really closely to each other. So what are some of the solutions that we have? Well, if you're running a lab or a professional print shop, you will see a lot of those like smaller desktop one or even just like a floor standing one that are really big. Those are the GTI light box. Those are the graphic technology inks box. They're really great fluorescence bulb that has been tuned to like the finest degree, but they do cost a lot of money. And if you're not really printing in that professional capacity all the time, or you're not really selling your prints for a lot of money, well, these solutions I'm about to share with you will work just fine. So what are some of the things that you can do? Well, if you want to get a Sheba solution, I would just say go find a light bulb that matches with the color temperature of your display, and you can just replace a lighting fixture in your studio so that any time a print is coming out from a printer, you can see it right away and compare it to your screen, and that should match really closely. But falling short of that, let's say you want the warm ambiance or whatever that may be in your studio, in your office, or in your home, and you want to maintain that. Well, the next best thing that you can do is to get a lamp like this. For example, I got this lamp on Amazon for around $20 and the light bulb itself, if you get a really good one, it's going to cost around 15 to 20 bucks per bulb. You can probably find some of these at your local hardware supply store, such as Home Depot or Lowe's uh, if you're in the US. Or if not, you can try to order from Amazon. Sometimes though, you have to go to a specialized lighting supply store for them to order a specific color temperature bulb for you. Another thing that you want to look at these bulb as well is an index called the CRI, the Color Reference Index. Pretty much this is going to tell you or give you a rough range of how great that color rendition is going to be from the light source that is coming out. This light, just because it's white light, it doesn't mean that all the colors are going to reflect back or all the spectrums are going to show the same way. CRI is a very generic number, but you want to find a light source with a high CRI. It goes as a range from zero to 100, and anything in the 90 range are going to be considered good for the applications that we're going to use here. From there, you can certainly just use these two solutions like I'm about to show you right now and just get everything going, just like so. But if you want to add in another element to it, let's say you want to be able to dim your light because these are LED light bulbs, you can certainly do that and get a Lutron dimmer such as the one that I have here. And you can see I'm dimming the light right now, making it brighter. And throughout this whole process, everything is going to cost around $20 a piece. I mean, pricing may change, so don't quote me on that. But in essence, you're spending around $60 on this solution in general. Like I said, you can always just buy the light bulb and change the fixture in your room, but if you want to maintain that, this would be the next solution that you can use. Well, falling short of that, what would be another better solution? This is something that I recommend that everyone gets, and it is a literally an LED light box. I'll put a link to the one that I have here. This is the IVC G2. It works really great. You can go in and change the color temperature of this light and also the intensity. And the advantage of being able to change the color temperature on here is that with these, you have to change a light bulb if you want to change the color temperature of the bulb. With this, you just dial it in. And guess what? This, you can use this in your photo shoot, in your video shoot, whatever that may be. You can use it. I put this in my camera bag. So every time I'm packing my camera bag in a darker lighting situation, I just clip this on my bag and I just use that or clip it on my trunk somewhere and have it shine light on the trunk. It's a very versatile tool, it's battery powered, it works really great. And this is something that I recommend that many photographers and if you do printing, go out and get because compare this thing that's cost around $60 to that $60 apparatus, I'd go with this any day. And this also has a high 90% or 90 plus CRI range index as well. All right, so let's take a look at this further. 
So now that you have seen some solution that I have for the light source, I'm going to show you some samples with a variety of lighting temperature. Do note that this is filmed through the camera, so color reproduction through the camera itself are going to be slightly different than perception that I see. So I'll be narrating through this whole process and kind of just walking you through the whole thing. But we're going to do a lot of comparison between the different light source, and then we'll come back here and conclude and wrap this up. Starting with the LED light box, this is set to 6500 Kelvin. Based on what I can see, the color matches between the print and the display really well. I'm going to show you an example. This is ice field and the color between the ice, what I'm seeing in the print and the display looks really close. The only slight difference would be the orange in the sky and also the reflected orange. And part of that has to do with the other gamut colors. So it is something that is considered acceptable. And this is an example showing you good light source in general that you can use to view your prints. What I'm seeing on the display right now matches really closely to each other with the way how the green is being rendered for both the top and the bottom green, the purple, and also her skin tone overall. It looks really close to each other. And lastly, we're going to take a look at one more print here for this lighting condition, and we can see that again, the color matches between the print and the display really well. This is the LED light box set to 5000 Kelvin. And it is different than what you're seeing on the display is because the display is still D65. I'm going to change the display to D50 and you can see that the colors look closer to each other now. With the exception that this LED light box of 5000 Kelvin has a tendency to output more magenta compared to another 5000 Kelvin bulb, which we'll see in just a second. So we'll see here that the whites in general doesn't look quite as neutral as a little bit more, I would say a little bit more towards the magenta, very slight magenta hue. The orange in the sky looks fairly close again. It's an out of gamut color, so it's actually hard to, to reproduce here. And if we take a look at the portrait, overall the green, the way how it's being rendered at 50,000 Kelvin looks really close to each other. It looks pretty well. Her skin tone is a little bit more magenta because of the way how the light source is rendering this print. And lastly, when we take a look at this one, the blue in the background, the purple, pink in the hair looks really close to each other. However, the skin tone does have more magenta as you're going to see on the camera too. And sticking with 5000 Kelvin color temperature, I have popped in a 100 watt Cree LED light bulb that I purchased from Home Depot. This is a 5000 Kelvin 90 plus CRI light bulb that looks really well. And we can see that the color matches between the print and display is pretty good. However, if I've gone in and changed the display to D65, you can see there is a drastic difference where the display is showing much cooler comparing to the print. If I change this back to D65, the color match closely with each other. Let's have a look at another sample. Again, we can see the colors are rendering really close, really nicely to each other. In fact, the orange on this light is looking really close to what we're seeing on the display right now. Just some slight differences because of the out of gamut color range. This is proving to us that we can just match the light source color temperature to the display white point and we'll be able to proof our print just fine. The colors that I'm seeing on this print looks really close to what I'm seeing on the display and that's really great. And lastly, let's take a look at the last sample here in this group. Again, the colors are really close to each other. Blue is rendering fairly well and also pink, purple and also the skin tone as well. In this example, I am using a 6500 Kelvin LED light bulb that I purchased from Amazon. And this one, I believe, has a 90 plus CRI index. But again, when you buy the light bulb on Amazon, sometimes it's hard to get the CRI range value. And we can take a look and evaluate the colors here throughout the different samples that I have. Again, the rendition is really close to each other and the display has already been adjusted to D65. So we can see that the colors, for the most part, the green, the way how the purple is rendering and her skin tone is really closely what you're seeing on the print. And our last sample here. So if you can get your print so that it looks really close to the display like this, you are pretty much golden and ready to go. And this is the last example showing you what not to do. This is using a standard household light bulb that has a color temperature of around 3000 Kelvin. However, I don't know the CRI for this light bulb itself, but we can see that comparing this to the display, the colors are going to constantly look drastically different. Now, if I've gone in and changed the display to 
D50, before it was D65, we can still see that the colors are being rendered differently on the print and the display. So if you ever use these type of bulbs and you're trying to do print proofing here, it is not a good idea because the colors are always going to render differently. And let's have a look at the other samples. You can see that right now, because we're not matching the white point or the white point is not even close to what we're seeing on display, this is really drastically shifting the colors and the tone and what we're seeing in our images, which is definitely not preferable. And if you're trying to do print and display color matching, this will pretty much never happen. So getting a good light source is extremely important. Hopefully with those samples, you now understand the importance of having a good light source to view your print and why you should never use a generic household light bulb to view your print with because it drastically shifts the color temperature and the way how your print looks. Most of the time, you may know the color temperature of that light bulb. However, you won't know the CRI of it, so it's not a great idea. Some of the counter arguments for using these type of proper light source to view your prints I've heard is I want to maintain and use this generic household light bulb because it's what my client have in their environment. Chances are you're partially correct in the sense that your client probably have very similar color light bulb that they don't know the CRI value to. However, you don't know the color of their wall. You don't know if they have anything on the floor that's reflecting from the environment, how the window lights coming in because all of those will change the color temperature what's in that environment in general. And then to go further in that rabbit hole, some are saying I'm going to adjust the color of my print or rather I'm going to adjust the color how my image look on the display to match that when I'm using the wrong color light source to view my print which is something that I highly advise you don't do because that image if you adjust it that way is going to look terrible on any display out there and it may match here when you're using the wrong color temperature light bulb but it's not going to look good anywhere else. So again, I don't advise doing that. Some have said that, well, I use daylight to view my print. Well, a couple of things. Daylight is generally around 5,900 Kelvin, and it's pretty much smack there right in the middle of no man's land, not D65, D55, or D50. So it doesn't really work either way, and you can't really use that middle ground where is no man land to view your print. The next question is then how are you viewing your print? Are you taking out in daylight and are you taking your screen out in daylight too, just in the middle of the sun? Or are you viewing it as a window light coming in? Because sunlight, one thing I want to emphasize as well is that the atmospheric condition, the smog, the pollution, uh, whatever is in the air is changing the color temperature. If that sunlight is reflecting off the grass, you're now changing the color temperature where it's showing a little bit more green and it's changing the spectrum of it. The lighting that you may say come in from the window could be coming in from a shade and overhang. That will change the color temperature. If you have a big tree outside, it will change the color temperature and it can vary throughout the day. And that is the reason why it's not a good idea to use daylight to view your print. And that's the reason why having a darker environment, a lighting control environment where you can just use these lights are going to help you a lot in print proofing. So I hope you find this educational. Questions or comments below, give this a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.